Hi, it's Doug. Have you ever accidentally discovered something that makes a funny sound? Like, here's one I found the other day. Maybe you've done this before. Or sometimes you might just find something that sounds interesting, like this. Making a funny or interesting sound, it might make you smile. But do you know what? There are some adults whose job it is to discover ways to make new and interesting sounds. Like, have you ever thought about when you watch a show or you see a movie, if it's a cartoon, not only did everything you see in that cartoon have to be created by an artist, but people also have to create everything you hear in cartoons, like any of the characters in your favorite movie. They're created, which means their voices have to be created too. The words are read by actors. If you've seen Finding Dory, you'll remember there's one scene where Dory talks about having a tag on her fin. But we can go behind the scenes and we can see who's the person creating Dory's voice. Watch. What tag? There's a, oh, there's a tag on my fin. How could you forget you have a tag on your fin? Oh, no. Oh, I'm, okay. Sorry, I suffer from short-term memory loss. You don't remember what we were talking about? Mm-mm. Nope, not a clue. What were we talking about? It's fun to see someone who does a voice of the cartoon characters that you know. But now, what about all the other sounds that are needed for a movie? Well, not just the characters, but when things are happening. Like in Star Wars, when spaceships are flying around and shooting lasers. <laughs> Listen to all those sounds, the laser sounds. They sound like pew, pew, pew. Listen again. And you might wonder, how do they make those sounds? Well, these sorts of sounds, the ones that aren't the voices of characters, we call those sound effects. Watch how a sound effect artist creates the laser sound using, guess what, a metal slinky. Ready? Listen. Cool, let's see that up close. So that's how it's done. Now, what if you had a cartoon about frogs and you needed the sound of frogs croaking to go along with a cartoon? How would you make those? Well, you don't need the sound of real frogs in order to make a sound for this. Watch what this sound effects artist does. So you see, the sound effect artist was just rubbing one string across another string that was really tight in order to create the sound of frogs. Now, what if you needed wind for a cartoon that shows a windy day? How do they do that? Again, you don't need the real sound of wind. Watch and listen now. And if this were a cartoon about a storm, how would they make the sound of thunder? Check this out. Do you see that? He's just vibrating a big metal sheet and banging against it. You might notice that for a lot of these sounds, sound effect artists find it helpful to do a back and forth movement of one thing rubbing or hitting against another. And we call something going back and forth a vibration. Different kinds of vibrations make different sounds. Like when a door spring goes back and forth or vibrates, it makes a silly sound. And vibrating a tight string back and forth, we saw makes the sound of a frog. And vibrating a big sheet of metal back and forth makes a deep rumble like thunder. Now, say that your job was to come up with sound effects for a cartoon or a movie. Let's say, for example, that you had to come up with the sound effects for the rain during a storm. I have a question for you. I sent it to your teacher so that you can read it together. In today's activity, you're going to make all
all the sounds of a cartoon rainstorm, just like a sound effects artist would do. First though, let's listen to the sounds of a real rainstorm. So go ahead and close your eyes now.